Here's another one in the eye for those who claim I only do expensive PCP rifle reviews. The Diana Bandit. It is a PCP, but it's a pistol. <laughs> And welcome to AAR on air. Or should I say windy air? I have no idea because it's blowing another gale outside. We just seem to be getting one after the other. So hopefully we won't get blown away and we can crack on with this week's review, which is one of those how do they do it for that kind of price guns. I've said before how much I enjoy reviewing a beautiful high end rifle full of innovation and engineering excellence. But I enjoy just as much, and sometimes more, when I get my hands on a budget gun that ticks more boxes than you ever thought it could do, and is less money than a budget scope you would put on your rifle. This Diana is one of those guns, and seems to be more than just the sum of its parts. Let's take a closer look, shall we? A few stats first. This is 510 millimeters long or around 20.1 inches. It has a 240 millimeter or nine inch long barrel and tops the scales at one kilo or 2.2 pounds. It's metal and wood. And yes, you heard me right. It is a pre-charged pneumatic pistol for less than 170 pounds UK. Blimey. Let's do the walk around, shall we? Out front to start with, there is a removable silencer or moderator that I read as Drunk Luftwaffen. And no, that's not an inebriated German pilot. It actually says Dunk Luftwaffen, which translates to compressed air gun. I feel a trip to the opticians is probably a bit overdue. Anyway, behind this is the open blade front sight on the end of that rifled barrel that matches up with the fully adjustable rear sight, which is fully removable as well to be able to replace it with an alternative sighting aid on the 11mm rail that runs along the top. Back to that front. Under that barrel is a tiny 50 cc capacity air cylinder complete with gauge on the front to show the maximum fill pressure which incidentally is 200 bar so i'm not expecting ultra high shot count from this size cylinder and i'll check out the shot count a little later this end has a twist dust cover for the filler port which is a nice touch like I said, this is a budget gun, and yet they thought of lots of nice touches. From here, all the rest of the detail is back at the grip end. The grip itself is quite broad and ergonomic, and a one-piece comfortable item. Beechwood, I believe. It may be that some people with very small hands may find it a little big for them. Me, I found it was really pleasant to use. The trigger is all metal along with the trigger guard. That trigger is, by the way, a two-stage item with the safety incorporated in it. A push through from right to left drops it into fire and the red indicator is visible. Move it from left to right and it completely locks the trigger. Amazingly enough, that trigger is adjustable to satisfy even the most picky owner. Above all of this is the bolt action. The bolt itself is on the left-hand side and is not transferable over to the right side, but I would still class this as ambidextrous. The pull on the bolt is really quite smooth and sure, this can be used with the single shot tray, which it comes provided and fitted, or it can be taken out and replaced with the supplied nine shot capacity in 177 and seven capacity in 22 
magazine. Now loading this is pretty simple. Rotate the Perspex front anti-clockwise until it stops. Then load in your first pellet upside down. Once that's in place, simply rotate back around and drop your pellets in face, for, face down from the front, easy for me to say. And keep going all the way around until you're full. Once you're all loaded up, simply pull back on that bolt, slide in your full magazine from the left, slide forward on the bolt, lock into place, and you're ready to go. Filling this up is pretty simple, because they supply the probe, slot it in through the bottom, connect up your usual or preferred source, and take it up to the 200 bar maximum fill. Once you're done, remove, twist the dust cover, keep everything nice and neat and tidy. This whole set comes complete with the filler probe and a zip up soft case to keep everything together. Now, if that doesn't represent value for money, then you're a tough audience. Power levels. Well, the manufacturers state this is capable of 13 joules in 177 and 16 joules in 22. Here in the UK, we need to keep that below around seven and a half joules to keep ourselves on the right side of the law. So let's just pop this over the chronograph and make sure we're okay with this here in Blighty. I shot this with some of the QYS 8.48 grain pellets and it saw 474 feet per second, which is 4.23 foot pounds or 5.74 joules. So not some low power item then, but still within the six foot pound maximum for us. That, by the way, was straight out the box and in time and in better weather will likely creep up a little. Time to get this out in front of some targets. Now I'm expecting a little more than just some plinking with this one. So it's going to be out at 10 meters shooting some proper targets. Just to help me, I'm going to drop a red dot on it to give me a better chance. <laughs> Still cold. Still really, really cold. OK, windy day. Trying to calm it down a little bit. Diana Bandit. I quite like these. And what we've got is a red dot scope on there. Not an expensive one. And I haven't even bothered taking off the rear sights. Now, it will allow you to take that off and go straight across with a proper pistol scope or whatever it is you prefer. You can shoot it without a silencer, moderator, or drunk German air... Yeah, <laughs> air pilot, whatever. Um, I'm going to shoot it with the single shot tray, give it its best chance. It is very windy, as we've already said, 10 metres. It's a pistol, four and a bit foot pounds, which is actually quite a lot for a, a small pistol. And you get a reasonable amount of shots out of these, surprisingly reasonable amount of shots. Sit down, just simple tripod that I'm going to rest upon, give it a go. I've sort of semi-zeroed the red dot in. I could spend a lot more time, but it is cold, so I can't be too interested in getting myself any colder. My little fingers are really struggling with these 177 pellets. This is available in 2.2, and usually packs a bit more power in 2.2. That's doing really well, really well. Yeah, I'm resting. It's quite impressed. I am quite impressed with that. Wind's getting up again. Now I know there are parts of the world that get far worse weather conditions than we do. And some of you turn around and say, well, why didn't you wait until it was a bit better day? Because apparently there's snow forecast. And it's probably going to come in like a blizzard. 
and I'm solar powered, so for me, out in snow, ugh. Yeah, maybe I should get Mrs. A.R. to do it. <laughs> it's a good job she's not around today to hear that. Yeah, that's quite impressive. I like that. I have tried the other version, and I like that CO2 version. PCP, so much better. Yeah, you're going to get a reasonable amount of shots out of that. The, piss, the grip is really, really nice. And you probably could do reasonably well by just holding it as a single grip without resting. I like it. like it a lot. Now, I don't think you can complain about that. I was using those QYS pellets again, and I must say, so far, they're impressing me. And I think I will use them over a few more guns in the coming reviews. I saw around 40 plus good shots from this 177 caliber version and all things being equal at this power level you should see a few more shots from the 2.2 version. Naturally if you're in a country that isn't restricted by the power levels such as we are you may well get a few less shots per fill. So, less than £170 for a PCP pistol with adjustable sights, adjustable trigger, silencer, single shot tray, magazine, case and a drunken German pilot. Okay, there isn't one of those. This isn't a lot to not like about it. I would say it's a darn good way of getting yourself into the air gunning world with power and accuracy without the need to sell one of the kids to be able to afford it. It's great fun. I've enjoyed it. Hopefully you have too. If so, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, share, click the alarm bell, join in the forums, visit the AAR website and of course a big thank you to Vector Air for getting hold of this for me to review. Another little belter. Finally of course a big thank you to you guys for watching. Stay safe and shoot safe and hopefully I'll see you next week. Bye for now.